Welcome to the Golden State Media Concepts College Football Podcast, your ticket to all things college football. Are you looking to get your college football fix? Looking to get the latest news on your favorite school's team? Join us as we talk college football from the national championship to college rivalries to bowl games to the Heisman Trophy to which conference is the best. We've got you covered for the Big Ten, SEC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, and everything in between. up welcome to gsmc football podcast on a monday today here as we're going to start off our week with some talk on college football as this is the college football edition of this football podcast which is always brought to you by the gsmc podcast network my name is tom doherty your host and i mean this is we're getting into the week where we're 10 days well some teams are less than under 10 days away single digits uh, for the, our big squads, we, we covered for the games on September 1st and September 2nd, as we uh, talked about uh, most of la- a lot of last week, kind of figuring out who's playing when and and then uh, who's playing where, because we're going to have a lot of neutral field games during week one. Of course, our great kickoff week as college uh, gets that jump on the – well, the NFL has four, week four. That's great, actually, because that week is week four of the preseason, and that's usually the worst – the worst week. We're kind of tired of the preseason by now, for at least for the NFL fans uh, who are both college and NFL fans, and they could uh, t- turn their attention to the college football game for the week and the games that matter versus the fourth preseason game for your NFL team, and uh, where you, you're none of the starters are going to play pretty much. Um, okay, so going into this college stuff, who, where they don't have a preseason, they don't play any preseason games. By the way, we talked about that last week as well. Uh, it's just that college, I mean, I think it's just lack of, I mean, whether it's the reps or they, they think they can, it's, it's a more simplified game um, when it comes to play calling and the, and the complex uh, packages that they run. I mean, it's not, that, I don't think it's that much simplified anymore now because there's some colleges out there that have some pretty, uh, pretty sophisticated offensive attacks as well with their play calling as well. So, I mean, they probably could use the preseason, but they don't want to have to put the kids out there for more uh, head-to-head matchups where they get injured. I mean, the, it's the NFL. I, I do understand why there's a preseason, a preseason in the NFL because there's so many uh, roster spots that can get decided and they need to be decided in real game situations versus college. You have a scholarship guy or a walk-on. The walk-on, you're probably going to tell if he's if he's going to make it or not through uh, some, some practices and a tryout. So it's a little different. All right, so we're going to talk about the um, the ongoing QB battles. We talked about them, uh, I think, either last week or the week before. Um, we talked about those QB QB battles, kind of just doing an update. Now we're, like I said, some, play, some most schools 10, 11 days away from their first game, and we haven't really had any uh, definitive um, uh, statements by a coach in at any program, uh, seemingly. Uh, I know that. Nick Saban hasn't said anything about what uh, whether who's going to be starting for him, who, about who's going to be starting for him come uh, come that game against Louisville. Obviously, you got junior Jalen Hurts against the sophomore and Tua Tua Tagovailoa. Tua was hurt during spring ball. Jalen couldn't really do much because the offensive line couldn't protect him because the, they just weren't in sync. Uh, it looks like that. It looks like that it doesn't look that great for Hertz. Obviously, he's come out and said that he, he his with his comments and how the coaches haven't really communicated communicated to him at all during the off season. Um, I mean, uh, Nick Saban had a long, a long, long comment about it. As uh, as I mean, I could read it for you. So this is what Nick Saban said: "Like, look, we're going to evaluate the quarterback situation. We're going to keep looking at these guys." Uh, what somebody did today or didn't do today isn't going to win or lose them the job. I mean, I think it's, yeah, it's probably what he said. 
Yeah, that's what he said after following the first scrimmage way up in uh, in spring ball. We talked we talked about that months ago when I first started doing this show. But um, obviously, this could be a competition that goes on throughout the season. Uh, Alabama has a lot of talent around these two quarterbacks, so they could probably carry them even if they don't have a solidified leader. Um, it's there's the, these the, this is a team that probably they doesn't need they don't need that much. Um, output from their quarterback from that from the quarterback's position because they have such a good defense. It's probably going to score a good amount itself uh, off turnovers, and then uh, it's also going to put the offense in good positions to score off turnovers. And then, uh, of course, you have um, the uh, the running back there, uh, not, uh, Harris, who is going to be, I mean, a pretty a pretty good force to be reckoned with as well. Um, Clemson also technically, I mean, they have a quarterback competition as well. I know that. Uh, Dabo Swinney tech, they did put Kelly Bryant on top of the, at the top of the depth chart, but they did not, he did not definitively say that, that, uh, um, that Kelly Bryant had gotten that job yet. So I mean, I guess Trevor Lawrence is still in the mix here. Trevor Lawrence is going to be the quarterback there eventually, just a matter of time kind of thing. Uh, whether it's going to be this year or during the year, halfway through the season, if Kelly Bryant's not cutting it, uh, or if the, if he's able to, Kelly Bryant's able to just, Stay in there the whole rest of the senior season, and then uh, hand it over to Trevor Lawrence at the end of, or at the, for the for next year. Um, is what is what uh, could I mean? That's what that's what Kelly Bryant hopes to happens. Obviously, he keeps the job the whole time. But uh, the pro- the problem is that obviously Trevor Lawrence is really caught on to the the game pretty quickly. I um, mean, the game plan at Clemson, the playbook. He's definitely been able to. Uh, been able to get the subtleties out of the playbook as well. Been able to pick them up, and the staff has been uh, pleasantly surprised by the young quarterback talent. I mean, I know that they probably know they're getting, they know they're getting the best quarterback talent in the nation, or one of them. I know there's JT Daniels over there. Then again, JT Daniels reclassified. He was supposed to be a 2019 recruit, which then would affect make Trevor Lawrence the number one quarterback recruit for 2018. But when he reclassified. Then you can throw it up for debate again there and see. Okay, now we're putting Trevor Lawrence and JT Daniels in the comparison. I mean, that's, those are going to be your top two quarterbacks at least, if not this year, but definitely next year when they uh, are going to be in their second year at the pro on the program, whether they're starting or not. This year doesn't make a difference. <laughs> it's going to be just fine. Uh, but no, at Clemson, I think that you're going to still have Kelly Bryant. It's going to be the opposite of. Well, I mean, I think Tua. Like I guess I've been ta- preaching the Tua got that job but way back in january kelly bryant may have lost the job way back in january as well or whether well, yeah in the new year six game um during the semifinal that's probably that could have definitely would have happened where kelly bryant loses that job way back in the semifinal because he couldn't move the ball against alabama and uh, you know trevor lawrence you never i mean you can't go back in time and decide that oh trevor lawrence would have done better against alabama we don't know that uh, but you know, it's always like to. It's always nice to have a fresh. If you've seen a guy do a bunch of things, uh, doing something, uh, maybe he reaches the ceiling. That's why I think of Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts has definitely reached his ceiling at the University of Alabama when it comes to quarterback play, and Tua Tagovailoa has not, and his ceiling is much higher, and that's why he gets the job. Whether it, I know there's a lot, a lot of variables and a lot of parts of being quarterback, whether it's leadership or just tenaciousness, tenacity. Or just being able to, you know, understand and execute the playbook correctly, and uh, having the trust of your offensive line and your whole offense basically in the huddle is the, it's all encompassed in that. Having a good mentality, having a focused, um, focused relationship with the coach. I mean, all that goes into it. And I think that I mean, well, we don't know. We have only seen two in a small sample size, not even a full game yet. So um there is some question marks which is why there i don't think this is this is why he hasn't been just given the job outright uh you have a guy who is very successful at alabama and jalen hurt same thing at clemson it's very same very similar you have J- kelly bryant had, was very very successful last year in his uh first year starting coming off of after of course coming off of a time where you're sitting behind uh, Deshaun Watson, which is, I mean, you're, there was no way you're taking a job from that guy. That guy is a stud. Obviously, he's gonna, we're going to see how he does in Houston this year, hopefully staying healthy for the Texans. But, you know, it's similar. Kelly Bryant did well last year, then hiccuped at the end of the year in the uh, against that very Alabama team, which is pretty interesting. And then you have uh, Jalen Hurts doing the same thing, where he did fine, carried the team as far as he could, then hiccuped in the national championship game and was had to get bailed out um, by his backup, and that's Tua Tagovailoa. 
there was no Trevor Lawrence at uh, at at Clemson last year. I think. Well, maybe they could have put in. I mean, I guess they could have put in Hunter Johnson during that Alabama game if Kelly Bryant really wasn't cutting it. But I mean, you can go back and see if Dabo did, Dabo did that or not. But he couldn't put in Trevor Lawrence. Trevor Lawrence wasn't there yet, so uh, that's the one thing. So you know, Kelly, and we'll see what what the whole thing is. What to expect? Obviously, um, you can't. You're gonna you're gonna think that um, both quarterbacks are gonna play probably against Furman. Uh, their first game, you expect them to get both a chance to get out there, and then uh, of course that week two road game against Texas A and M is probably when it's going to win the real decision. You're not going to have three games to figure it out uh, to start off your season. You're going to be playing U- T- Texas A and M in that re- week two uh, non conference game in uh, College Station. So I'm sure they're probably going to have to figure that out. And again, uh, Dabo said that um, the best quarterback in practice uh, has been but well, is going to be the starter. And if it's Trevor Lawrence, then I think that you probably just gave him the, the start on week one and maybe throw in Kelly Bryant as well in there against Furman. Uh, but really put your yeah, – for me, it's all about confidence. And you have – these are young kids. These are not NFL quarterbacks where they're getting paid. They're just waiting for their chance. These are kids. They need to be reinforced, reinstilled confidence into themselves. And uh, having your head coach get behind you and say, I'm putting myself behind you. Um, yeah, it's a big burden, but it's also a challenge to these kids, and they've been challenged their whole lives. And they know, especially Trevor Lawrence was the best quarterback in Georgia football history, breaking whose records? Oh, Deshaun Watson, that's right, Uh-huh. Uh huh. for Georgia high school football. So I think that's – as if you're, if you're a kid like that and you have all these accolades and everything, you're, you're, waiting, you're just basically waiting for your coach to put his trust in you, and then you're ready. He's like, this is the last thing. I'm basically at the starting blocks. I'm ready for the coach to say, uh, you're the man, and I'm about to hit, uh, start the gun. Let's go. I can throw all the sports analogies out there you want me to do. But if you're not, it's like, oh, coach, are you ready for me? Okay, coach. Oh, oh I'm not sure. No, no, no. These are guys where they're, I think, well, at least Trevor Lawrence is. Kelly Bryant gives me a different vibe where he's more like the fact that he's even letting this freshman kind of sneak, in on, sneak up on him and uh, take over his job as a senior makes me think that i mean does he want i mean i'm not questioning does he want it or not but just he can't put it in a second gear where it's like yeah i'm the guy i'm the guy he can wait his turn um and not having Dabo's support might be i think affecting him negatively where it's like why can't i was the guy i was the starter last year why can't the coaches get behind me they get this kid in here he can't wait a year to play he's got to jump in right away he's got to be in the conversation right away Oh, I better play. He, oh, that's the fight or flight situation right there for for uh, any human, any situation. Do you fight to get your job, or do you fight and let the rumors sneak in, seep in further, and have ESPN say that? Oh, if if Trevor Lawrence is better in practice, then he's going to be the starter, like Dabo said. You're letting it. You're going to let that freshman be better better than you in practice. I mean, if he's a better quarterback, he's a better quarterback. But he's, you got three years on the kid. You think that you're veteranness would maybe make you look a little bit better in practice than de facto give you the starting job. But if that's not the case, then it's not the case. And that says something about Kelly Bryant. It's, it is what it is. Obviously last year, the one game that his defense did not come to play against Alabama, he couldn't do anything either. So it was a, I mean, obviously we know the score of that game was not, not very good looking on Kelly Bryant. Wasn't good looking on the defense either, but uh, that's what carried that team last year. That's what's going to carry this team this year, which is a fortunate thing for uh, the Clemson Tigers. Their defense is just as good as it was last year, at least in the front seven. And it is because you get Christian Wilkins back. You have those two uh, young linemen as well coming back in another year under their belt with Christian Wilkins there as a, as a help little helper. Um, as so, you know, no helper, but it's in a mentor situation as well. So yeah, it's gonna be interesting to see those two schools, big powers, number one and number two in the nation, both having a young quarterback, try and usurp a older quarterback. I know we saw two, obviously in game situation already. And we, we kind of can see that he's better than Dylan hurts. Uh, Trevor Lawrence, all the, Numbers from high school, all of the stuff we've been hearing as far as the media media reports, point to him being better than Kelly Bryant. But we haven't seen him actually on the field other than spring ball, even though he threw a dime in spring ball that I watched a million times. Um, we don't know, and I think that Dabo is there's the he gets paid all the big bucks for those for this very reason. And I mean, he's got Furman. That's the thing. He's got Furman, and he's got a week I think to figure out how much better. 
Trevor Lawrence is Kelly Bryant, and who's going to have who's going to give them the better chance uh, to win against Texas A and M, who has their own quarterback situation as well. So we'll get to that on the other side of the break. So everybody, stay tuned, and we'll be right back. See more of the USA than ever before with American Airlines. Fly direct to Dallas-Fort Worth from Dublin Airport this summer and connect onwards to over 240 destinations across North America. Enjoy complimentary meals, drinks from the bar, transatlantic Wi-Fi, live TV, and over a 1,000 hours of entertainment on board our state-of-the-art Dreamliner. Start your next big adventure with American Airlines at AA.com. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back to GSMC Football Podcast, the college football edition today. On a Monday, as we're talking, um, we're talking quarterback competitions. Uh, you can you can think about them all your way, all your different ways you want to go. Uh, in college, I think that um, I think that you can kind of. You don't, it's not a quarterback driven league as we've seen in the NFL. NFL is much m- definitely a quarterback driven league. Oh, but Tom Nick Foles on the Super- yeah, I know Nick Foles honestly played very well in the Super Bowl, and they played very well all the way leading up to the Super Bowl too. So yeah, he th- won the MVP of the Super Bowl too. So you can't tell me that the NFL does not is not a quarterback driven league. It's a quarterback driven league. College is not. College is a lot of coaching. It's a lot of just my players are better than your players. My players are faster than your players. My players are stronger than your players. I recruited better than you. Um, it comes down to, I mean, there, we can go through the variables of football in a different time because we know that there's a lot of them and uh, whether it's officiating or like I said, coaching fluke plays that happened. We had a play last year that should never have happened between Duke and Miami. Uh, um, it was that a couple of years ago. Uh, yeah. So I mean, this, the college football is definitely a little up and more up in the air as far as uh, the fact that you have. Uh, more than 30 teams that I mean, you have 100 teams that are fighting for I mean you get top 25 obviously and then you have the ones that are okay yeah they have a chance to probably make it to the college football playoff it's probably closer to like 10 teams or so uh, coming into the season because there's a lot of turnover we had we had a lot of turnover last year we had five when you have five quarterbacks go in the first round of the NFL draft you're gonna have some turnover and there's turnover even at schools that didn't have a quarterback drafted that early Ohio, uh, Oklahoma State, Mason Rudolph's gone. Changeover. Uh, you have still question marks at Texas and Texas A and M regarding their quarterbacks. No changeover. No no turnover there. But you just still. And then obviously uh, UCLA and USC. New new changeover there. Whether it's gonna be Devin Monster or um, I think it's gonna be Dorian Thompson Robinson. Even though Monster might be the leader in the clubhouse, I think Dorian's just. I think he's gonna fit. Uh, Chip Kelly is going to see much more. Uh, like I said, it's all about ceiling. Whose ceiling is higher? Who's fl- there's a ceiling and there's floor actually. So f- ceiling means what's your what's the highest you can be? What's the best you can be? What is your ceiling? The best you could be. Like Jalen Hurts probably reached the ceiling already. He's reached the point where he the best he could be. To a Tagovailoa, not so much. Kelly Bryant has probably reached the reached the ceiling. J- uh, we don't know what Trevor Lawrence's ceiling is. So I mean that's a, that's the the potential ceiling is very high. His floor, honestly, his floor is very high too because he already came into college floor is where you're at now like where you're starting from basically you can figure that out um and you you have very high floor already same thing with jt daniels they have a very high floor and a very high ceiling so you're starting at a high level and you could push that up to an even higher level 
um, even in the sm- short time you're going to be at college or uh, wherever college you're in. Well, JT Daniels at USC and Trevor Lawrence at Clemson. So it kind of figures itself out as it goes along. You, you know, US, USC has been kind of the place where quarterbacks can be successful, but then no translation. Um, if it's, if it, that's of course is a school that's going to get very much evaluated on how it's play, uh, how its players perform in the NFL, as with most big schools. Um, depending on the quarterback, situ- obviously quarterback situation is different. You're not like, oh my gosh, the Alabama quarterback did not do well in the NFL, yeah, because they don't they don't recruit quarterbacks like that. USC recruits quarterbacks for a pro style offense that they want to run the offense, like Sam Darnold, basically. Um, so we're going to see how that works in Sam Darnold, and we're going to see how JT Daniels, if he comes in and takes that job from Matt Fink and takes that job from Jack Sears and says, you know what? Sorry, guys. I know I should be a senior in high school, but I'm better than you. And I played in high school since I was a freshman, and I was very good at a very good school and a very good league. That league is not easy. He plays in, he plays against very, very high quality uh, opponents in high school uh, in Matt, with Matter Day. That's that league they play in. I think, I don't know, it's the. Horizon League or the Trinity, League, whatever they call it, uh, down there with those private schools. It's legit, legit uh, high school football, and he plays at a very high level. You saw the it has been highlight footage all over the place because he's getting to the point now where he might get the dang job. I mean, coaches were more excited were excited about him. He actually came a year and a half early. I think he graduated at the end of December of this last year, which is middle of his junior season um, or after his junior season was over. And he came right to campus, and he came, and he went right in there and started t- uh, doing stuff with uh, the the coaches. I mean, there's quarterback controversy, there's quarterback competitions literally everywhere. I mean, right now, so USC, UCLA, Texas A and M, Texas, Oklahoma, because they're actually Kyler Murray and Austin Kendall are still kind of in competition right now. Uh, Nebraska has three different guys. We talked about that a little bit a couple weeks ago. Michigan, obviously. Shea Patterson, I've kind of deemed the winner of this, even though there's other guys in there as well. Um, you don't got you don't bring him over just to have him sit on the bench. Um, LSU, Joe Burrow coming in and shaking that situation up a little bit. And then Georgia. Georgia, honestly, has the best problem, but also the worst problem at the same time. Because... Quarterbacks can define the kind of offense. Uh, this is, I mean, I know I'm getting to Georgia. There's more schools. I think Florida's on there as well. I'll come back. We're going to come back to Georgia. I'm going to touch on every one of these schools, honestly. Uh, but Georgia is the most intriguing to me. So you have uh, Florida and Florida State as well. We talked about Florida State a lot on this show. But no, Georgia is the most intriguing to me, honestly, because you have Jake Fromm. Who you're like, oh, he's going to be a starter next year. Why wouldn't he be? Um, he took his team as a freshman to the national championship game. Like, what is the question here? Well, Justin Fields is the question. Justin Fields is very good. And they're probably going to have scenarios where both of them are going to be off and on the field. Uh, and they are going to define the play call, I think, because J- Josh F- Jake Fromm is more of a drop back and pass uh, pro style quarterback versus Justin Fields being a dual, th- dual threat guy where he's going to be able to run. Jake Fromm can run, but I mean, you don't have Justin Fields in there as a top. He was a top recruit for 2017, I think. In 20 or him, him and Trevor Lawrence were the top two quarterbacks basically in 2018. And uh, yeah, so I mean, you can't you can't go away from that. And you recruited. He picked you. He took, he picked that school. Even though I don't know, seeing Jake from in there already and what they were putting behind him, I would have just probably picked a different school. He had the pick of the litter where he could have gone whatever, literally wherever he wanted to go, Justin Fields. But I mean, if he's from, you want to stay, if you, I, mean, I don't know, he could be from, I think he's from Georgia. You want to stay home. I mean, you, it is what it is. Or he just feels like maybe he's good enough to get into the, into the starting position and, and take that over from Jake Fromm and then have the Georgia team that went to the national championship last year um, to do that. I mean, obviously, Kirby Smart actually did have uh, some words to say about Jake Fromm and Justin Fields about after the um, after this, their second sh- scrimmage because I mean, their preseason scrimmage is kind of for uh, for these teams coming into the season. As he did uh, come out and say they had scrimmage on Saturday, um, just, Kirby was not happy with either guy. He said, "I'm not pleased with either guy. I don't. I didn't think either one of the guys played exceptionally well today. Maybe we put too much on them. Maybe we asked too much of them today because." We didn't go out there and three yards of cloud and dust. We said, let's open it up a little bit. Let's throw it around a little bit, and we'll see how they do. I didn't think it was that great. So, yeah, um, I think that the, a more open passing offense is going to favor 
probably favor the more experienced quarterback with the with the play calls and the route combinations and everything protections, and that's going to be J- Jake Fromm versus Just, Justin Fields uh, coming in there uh, for his first season. Obviously, number two overall recruit with Kelly Bryant, I think was number one, um, at least close uh, for the quarterback for the quarterback class. Five star prospect Justin Fields. Um, yeah, this is the fact that maybe he maybe it doesn't really go to his game to have it throw the ball around that much. Uh, that would be make me think that. So, um, you know, going in go, thinking about that, those two, these guys, I think that you want if you want a more electric guy, you probably go with Justin Fields. If you want more of the game manager, a kid that took you to the national championship game as a freshman, I mean, that's that's as it says a lot in itself. And uh, I think that you can kind of determine that from there and go go forward as as Kirby Smart would anyways. Um he's a defensive guy and he'll probably be listening to his um listening to his uh coaches especially and then obviously if he if we're this close to the season Saturday uh this last Saturday we're a week and a half from the season and um you know it just sucks that he has to. We're already at the, we're at this point where you know, oh, both guys were not looking like it. We wanted to open it up a little bit. We wanted to throw the ball around during in the scrimmage, and neither of them stepped up to the challenge. So, which is kind of just make it so it takes another week to decide, and um, it takes another week to say, okay, we're going to run both of them out there. So, you know, I think that you're going to have some. You're going to see some of both of them, and it's. I think it actually will be the best. Um, Situation where you're going to have two quarterbacks. I don't think that I think it's going to work. Better. It would work better than Clemson because Clemson is a situation where it's clearly Trevor Lawrence is trying to it, it, not trying to consciously trying to, but just in effect of the that's how sports work. Push him, out, push Kelly Bryant out of the way uh, and make it his team and take ownership on the team. Versus Jake Fromm, still just a sophomore. Uh, Justin Fields is just as freshman. Um, you have a guy who went to the national championship, like I keep saying, and uh, they both can contribute together collectively and make that. Georgia team better uh, as well. I mean, the same thing could, you could say the same thing about Alabama because Jalen Hurts is a very talented kid. He's very good in the space. He's good running the ball, and you could make him put, be part of that offense and have Tua and Jalen uh, be together. Where I mean, oh, is there a rule against having two guys who could throw the ball in the field at the same time? I don't think so. Have, make Jalen Hurts a running back who can pass. I mean, because he could run it all right. Uh, we definitely know that. All right. Um, I just uh, just have a couple more minutes left in this segment as we'll look at these other co- uh, controversies. Um, controversies. I call. I think one of them. One of them has become a controversy. That's the one in Alabama. Um, that's the one in Alabama for sure. And I mean that's that's the one because I think that you're going to have guys where to a, they're talking to the media too much. It's the one that has the most media coverage. It's the one that has. Um, it's the one that has most uh, eyeballs around it, and you know it is what it is <laughs> with them. And I think uh, Urban Meyer, not Urban Meyer, but Nick Saban, in his comments regarding uh, the whole thing with the um, players having to win the team and everything, has kind of mucked it up a little more. Mucked it up a little more, <laughs> and the fact that uh, now you're going to have media people asking you if the team has a, a input in uh, in the quarterback quarterback. Uh, quarterback decision uh this season and they don't really i think it's like i think i understand i think kind of what he's uh saying is that they have to win the team as in like who is the team gravitating more towards who is naturally getting becoming more of a leader of this team and yeah you're putting some pressure on your other on your other players but i think you're not really legitimately telling hey i want you to pick who's the i want you to gravitate to whoever is more leader has more leadership qualities i think he's just going to wait for it to happen naturally and then when push comes to shove he's going to have to make a decision and whether it's going to be the same thing they do in Georgia, like I said, have both the guys try and contribute uh, in different ways, having Tua throw the ball and Jalen run it, then do that. You can make Jalen an H back or something like that, and make him make him part of the team in different ways, and not have him be a backup, but have him be uh, part of the offense in different ways. You could do running back passes, you could do different it's college, you could do trick plays up the wazoo if you want. Um, I know that's what I think Georgia is going to be doing this year, especially with uh, the fact that you have a. The starter. It's not like it's reverse, where you have the dual threat quarterback coming, uh, who's more experienced with the plays, uh, and then which and Jake Fromm coming in there, just kind of you know he's a 
passer versus having the passer and then getting the uh, the threat, the more athletic threat, and he could be more, you know, just give him the ball in different ways, make him make a play. Uh, and Jake Fromm can be more of the, you know, game manager, just field field general kind of situation, kind of scenario there um, at Georgia as well. So we'll come back after the break, and um, we're going to go over the couple more of these um, quarterback con- or competitions. Uh, let's look at the one at Texas. I know we talked a little bit about JT Daniels at USC. Um, we have so Florida, Texas A&M, LSU, Joe Burrow's there. I mean, there's all sorts of stuff, all sorts of stuff going on um, with, as we come down the final final fortnight, more or less, actually. It's ten. It's only 10 days, really. Um, we're going to have games on, the f- I think, less than 10 days because we're going to have games next Thursday. Um, the 29th or next Wednesday, 29th. I think we have games on Tuesday as well, a week from tomorrow and the 30th and 31st. We're going to have a bunch of division one double a games. And then we'll have the, uh, openers on Saturday and Sunday from Texas and Orlando. And I think that's it. And, oh, and Michigan too. I'm, I'm from uh, Notre Dame as well. So, cause we have Michigan, Notre Dame, uh, as well on week one. All right. Come back after the break. Stay tuned. We'll be back. Right. more of the USA than ever before with American Airlines. Fly direct to Dallas-Fort Worth from Dublin Airport this summer and connect onwards to over 240 destinations across North America. Enjoy complimentary meals, drinks from the bar, transatlantic Wi-Fi, live TV, and over a thousand hours of entertainment on board our state-of-the-art Dreamliner. Start your next big adventure with American Airlines at AA.com. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Back to GSMC Football Podcast, the college football edition on a Monday today here as we're talking quarterback competitions around the country, around all of college football is coast to coast. Um, we're going to have, we have colleges that are, have not had definitive decisions on quarterbacks and we're a handful of game, well, two handfuls of game a days away from the first game of the year or first big game of the year uh, from Texas. Or I mean, I think that, well, we're gonna have the Mer- M- M- Michigan and the uh, Notre Dame game as well on that day. So talked a lot about Clemson, talked a lot about Alabama, talked a lot about Georgia, talked a little bit about USC. Um, there's still con- still competition at Florida as uh, Felipe Franks, Emory Jones, and Kyle Trask all battle it out. Looks like uh, Felipe Franks is the uh, returning guy. So he did have them some of the uh, well, actually he didn't play all of the year last year, but he played most of the year last year. And then also Frank's having a slight edge over Trask because they're both the guys who are not freshmen. Emory Jones is a freshman as he comes in to look uh, look to maybe make mix it up a little bit. I mean, obviously, Dan Mullen um, wants to try and figure it out. He'd love to figure it out and uh, say this is going to be our starter, but they have to kind of figure it out as it goes along. As if it goes, uh, he's not going to... Um, that's what he said. I mean, I'm not, as, and as if not, I'm not as much naming the starter as it, as if it's I'm the backup or I'm the starter. I want to make sure the other guys are in the right frame of mind because they're going to uh, they're a play away from being the starter. So yeah, that's true. I mean, he doesn't want he wants everybody to be kind of be on an even even uh, play frame where you instead of having like some hi- hierarchy where you're having a quarterback. Oh, I'm the best. I'm the starter. Blah blah blah. You guys have nothing on me. Where it's like kind of a next man up scenario. It's like okay, well he's going to have his turn if he. You're a play, like I said, you're a play away from being the starter. Um, well, well, like I said, 
confidence is one thing, but confidence is is one thing for people who think that they should like you know a, a guy who's been there before, like a Tua or a, even a Jalen Hurts or a, or a Kelly Bryant. But for these guys, where there are two sophomores and a freshman, I don't think anybody really thinks that they're better than the other one. Um, they probably think that but they shouldn't, uh, and they should know that they're all pretty much on even on an even basis here. Basis here, and whoever becomes the first guy up. The next guy better be ready, and the first guy up better know that the next guy is ready behind him. And it's kind of you can build a camaraderie around that. It's like yes, we're all fighting for one job, but collectively we can all take over this quarterback job and have ownership over it as a, as a whole because the games are only one day. You're practicing every day with these guys, and you're working out with them. Yes, the game you're going to be you might be you, player A or Felipe Franks might be the play guy who actually gets to go on the field, but. Kyle, uh, Kyle Trask is, like I said, a play away. Emery gets, I mean, injuries happen, bad play happens, I mean, bad matchups. Maybe this guy works better with, against his team. Maybe they're reading his, he's tipping his plays, something like that, or he's not doing what he needs to do. Then you can have a guy who's right behind him and can jump in and take over there for the University of Florida because that's, I mean, that's, I, I understand that. If you don't have a tried and true starter, or if you have like, like you do in, at some of the other places we talked about, and then you have a guy who's kind of trying to sneak it, or not sneak in, but at least come in and, and take over that job, then you can get, there's a different, I think there's a different protocol there versus a situation where nobody's really taken a grasp of this, taking the reins or a grasp of this uh, job at any point. And they all can kind of collectively um, be a kind of you know create a, some sort of a brethren in a quarterback in the quarterback room at Florida, and you could have okay yeah it's your turn this time I'll be I'll be I got your back if you if I got your back if you uh, if you mess up or if uh, we can all jump in and you know help each other out kind of thing it's all for the good of the team very utilitarian uh, there at uh, University of Florida so uh, that's the thing. Then we can go back to the other side where you have actually the most, one of the more unique is another unique situation at Florida State where you have a guy in DeAndre Francois who was the starter, who was successful as a starter, then he gets hurt and you have James Blackman come in and not be as successful. He was all right, but he wasn't that successful in his first year um, with Jimbo Fisher. Which showed some signs of shows, shows some signs of uh, what he could, what he's able to do, why he was recruited by the universe by Florida State, and then of course we have all the inj- issues off the field with the um, uh, drug charges and the sting operation or whatever and whatever was drawn up against drummed up against Jean Francois that ended up not really amounting to anything, and he's trying to work his way back while James Franklin I mean not James Franklin um, Willie Taggart Willie Taggart is coming in for his first season and Willie Taggart. We talked about this all summer long, saying what a what a situation to come into. You're dealing with a, a quarterback who is coming out of an injury, then he has some drug issues, and uh, his girlfriend getting or they they put it on his girlfriend saying that it was her drugs or whatever. And the police is trying to sting you and blah blah blah. Nothing ever comes of it. And then you have another guy who's working his tail off in your office every morning, showing trying to show you that he's the best he could be and get that job again, James Blackman, because he had it last year uh, due to the injury. But, you know, it's going to come down to the fact that you know, DeAndre might be just better than you. He's more talented than you. He has more, he has more tools than you. He understands the playbook better than you, executes the offense better than you, and he's going to be the starter. So that's kind of – I think that's what it's going to take, honestly, because if, if you're DeAndre Francois, you have no – nothing is owed to you at all. You have taken every, every inch of the leash you probably have been given by the university uh, over this offseason. So – um, you have to. You probably have to. Uh, you probably have to think about it that way. And like, hmm, maybe, maybe uh, you have to think about his health. Number one, if he's at one hundred percent health, and number two, what's the cost and effect? I mean, what's the, yeah, cost and effect or, or effect? Uh, I'm trying to think of here. Opportunity cost here. What's it worth to put him in there and see what he can do and maybe win some games for us, or we hold him back and put the other guy in who uh, really has earned his stripes over this uh, few uh, over this year? But you know what? Obviously, Francois, he's trying to downplay it. And, it, of course, um, he says that in his uh, comments, I need to get better at all aspects, accuracy, throwing the ball, all cylinders of the offense. Um, but I feel like I'm, I, I, I feel like I like, I feel like being a good leader, putting in a good effort with the guys and doing everything I can to control. Interesting. Uh, but, you know, yeah, he, uh, he feels like being a good leader. He feels like it. What if you don't feel like it, DeAndre? Do you not? Do you not want to be? I don't know. That's not kind of a weird comment coming from a guy who wants to be a quarterback. Um, yeah, but hopefully, yeah, hopefully you do feel like it because that's kind of the part of the being a job. You want to be a leader. You want to lead this team uh, back to the uh, the prowess that it was once at, and you got a new head coach to do it with. So help you figure that one out. 
All right, Florida State. LSU. LSU is an inter- another interesting one where you got Miles Brennan, who is already there. Um, obviously, Justin McMillan and so did uh, Lowell Narcisse. They both left, actually, when uh, they both transferred away when when Joe Burrow showed up. So Joe Burrow coming in and really shaking it up at Bat- in Baton Rouge. And he could honestly be the guy who just comes in and plays – plays really well. I mean, uh, you could kind of just look back up at, at, uh, at Ohio State and be like, look what you're missing out on. Obviously, they have a very talented guy in Miles Haskins as, or Dwayne Haskins as well. But, um, you know, so they, I think they were, Ohio, I think Joe Burrow did a good job getting out of there in general because that whole football program is definitely under the whole huge Johnny rain cloud that is this investigation into Urban Meyer that is probably going to be coming to an end pretty soon here. We'll talk about that this, this week, likely, about what the decision is going to be from that panel. But, you know, Joe Burrow at LSU, get into the SEC, play some good competition. Maybe you can raise your, boost up your stock. Obviously, there's some good competition in the Big Ten, but Big Ten is top-heavy. Big Ten has five very good teams, and everybody else is either mediocre or bad. Uh, the SEC has... I mean, I want to say, like, what, three very good teams, four very good teams, and then everybody else is decent, is quite decent, except for, like, maybe Vanderbilt um, or Kentucky, I mean, even Kentucky. Even Kentucky, well, Kentucky football, eh, I don't know. They're a basketball team. They're, that's a basketball school. Uh, how they snuck into the SEC is interesting, but, you know, it is what it is. There, that's his conference alignment. Um, you know, Joe Burrow could be interesting. LSU going to open up against... Um, Miami this year and it'll be a cool little test because Miami was undefeated until they really hooked up hooked up last year and you got at, uh, LSU looking to get back into a, a, a situation where they could be contending for a big uh, SEC title game um, haven't been there since ever a long a while I think a, a few years even into the, back into the tenure of less miles but you know Ed Orgeron is there. He's not really the biggest X's and O's guy, but if you got some good coaches around him, he's definitely going to motivate his players. His players are going to be excited, they're going to be ready to play, they're going to be chopping the bit. That guy is a motivator. And uh, he's a very raw raw guy as well. So you got to like him at LSU for the time being at least. And um and see what they could do this year in their in their schedule. I mean, look at their schedule actually. Quickly here, they have that opener up against uh Miami. I think Joe Burrow honestly can come in there and take that job, especially when there's, if the two other guys leave, uh, they think that there's they smell blood in the water probably and they want to get out of there. So, yeah, so they have at their at home against Miami. I think is that actually it? Is that game going to be in? Uh, that's going to be a te- in Texas. So yeah, that's the second game. So you have two games. So it's those one game on Saturday. Um, that's the Auburn and Washington game from AT and T Stadium. Then Game Two on Sunday is LSU Miami. So you go, and then of course uh, mm, Alabama and Louisville play on Saturday, I think. But that game's in Orlando. Um, all right, so LSU their schedule looks like so they open up against, against Miami, the neutral field, and they're home against Southeast Louisiana. That's a win. Um, they go to Auburn, so they get tested early. So it's week three, they're at Auburn. That's going to be test early. If they can win that Miami game and then get through that Auburn game, they're looking pretty nice, three and zero. Then they got Louisiana Tech and then Ole Miss at home, for, at Florida, home against Georgia, a home against Mississippi State. They have three home games in a row: Georgia, Mississippi State, and Alabama. So I mean, at least they're all at home. That'd be nice. Uh, and then they get they go to Arkansas. They're home against Rice, and then they have a, a road game against Texas A&M. So that's actually not bad. You're facing your tough schedule. Um, the only tough ro- two tough road games might be that A&M and an Auburn game. I think they can get pot- – I mean, A&M is the last game of the season, so might have some implications there as well. But, you know, that Auburn game is going to be the test. They can get past Miami. They get past Auburn. Watch out for LSU because they have Ole Miss – at home, Florida, I think, is going to be still kind of down this year. They could beat Florida on the road. And then that three, those three home games in a row, Georgia, uh, Mississippi State, and Alabama, that's going to be obviously a test there. But all those teams have to go on the, uh, go into Death Valley. you got to go to Tiger Stadium. you got to win there. It's not an easy place to play. And, um, I mean, you can maybe mess up some seasons. <laughs> I mean, honestly, you need – you obviously, you're in the Big Ten. You're in the, in the SEC West with Alabama – and Auburn and Ole Miss, you need to beat all of those all those teams and have a chance to get into the SEC championship game. And if they have Joe Burrow, Joe Burrow was shown to to be a very talented guy. He could uh, I know it's the Big Ten versus the SEC, it might be a little bit different, a little faster, but I think he's going to be able to adapt and attest for his uh, his talents there at Ole Miss. I mean, I'm sorry, not for, attest for his talents at, at Ohio State, and then now moving them to LSU, obviously. Now and then the final one. 
quickly before this end of the uh, end of the segment, we're going to ch- change gears a little bit. Um, I think Michigan that competition is is, sure, is Shea Patterson's to lose. I don't know why. Um, they have we haven't had a uh, definitive comment from uh, Jim Harwell yet. The Nebraska they have three different guys. I think wasn't it uh, AJ Martinez was the guy uh, leader in the clubhouse a little bit, or at least uh, edging out. But Tristan Gebbia trying to uh, trying to make that interesting as well as he's a redshirt freshman. And then, obviously, Kyler Murray and Austin Kendall. I think Kyler Murray gets that job. I don't know why it hasn't been decided yet. And then the one that kind of is up in the air could be either. They could run both of them out there like they did last year. Is at Texas, uh, Sam Ellinger and Shane Bashir. And then at Texas A&M, you have Nick Starkle and Kellen Mond. And both of them played last year, too. So that's now Jimbo Fisher's decision to make at um, at Texas A&M as they, they continue to rotate the first-team uh, reps at practice. So, yeah, obviously, I mean, whether they can – Mix it up a little bit. You got your week two, uh, obviously week two opponents, Clemson on the ro- at home, and uh, you're going to have a test there. Even though it's going to be at Kyle Field, it's still going to be a very good Texas Clemson team. And those both those quarterbacks are probably going to have to cr- take a, get a chance to take a crack at that defense um, come week two of the season. So yeah, that'll be interesting. And that's the thing. The college isn't still either. They 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 they're going to put some good they're going to put some good stuff on the schedule for week two as well because they know that's the first week of the NFL. So uh, they'll they'll have that Clemson Texas A&M game to give you. Week two of the season. All right, that'll wrap it up for this segment. We'll come back after the break, and uh, we're going to touch on a little bit more on Maryland to do some updates as there is more stuff coming out from that report and that investigation at the University of Maryland. So everybody stay tuned, and we'll be right back. See more of the USA than ever before with American Airlines. Fly direct to Dallas-Fort Worth from Dublin Airport this summer and connect onwards to over 240 destinations across North America. Enjoy complimentary meals, drinks from the bar, transatlantic Wi-Fi, live TV, and over a thousand hours of entertainment on board our state-of-the-art Dreamliner. Start your next big adventure with American Airlines at AA.com. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts, past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome back to GSMC Football Podcast, the final segment of the day today. All right, and we're going to cover it. I mean, we, just, we talked a lot about quarterback stuff as well as talk about as much stuff on the field. Um, I want to, I mean, I want to uh, talk about as much stuff on the field as possible, even though there is some stuff off the field that needs to be addressed. I talked about it on, on Wednesday as well as, um, you know, this is something that is not the easiest thing to talk about. But, of course, there's uh, always questions and always things surrounding like, about uh, what's going on down at uh, at the University of Maryland. So, obviously, DJ Durkin and two of his staff members have been, um, have been put on leave. And then, of course, uh, well, suspended. And then there's uh, been no... Personnel issues um, announced yet as well. So I mean, Maryland, of course, did come out and uh, did respond to uh, to the mistakes that it made. So it says uh, they said the school accepts moral and legal responsibility for the mistakes. Quote that was the quote by uh, their their president Wallace D. Lowe, and then of course the um, made by its athletic training staff that uh, ultimately led to the death of the lineman, nineteen year old Jordan McNair, passing away on May um, uh, during. I think it was it was June June thirteenth. It was a few days after, uh, or a couple of weeks after the incident on May twenty ninth. And then, of course, Rick Court is the athletic trainer. I mean, of course, he's the um, 
assistant. So that's his. Uh, that's actually is his title was assistant athletic director for sports performance, and he actually did resign on Monday and um, did uh, reach a financial settlement with the university and did uh, post a Twitter uh, letter on Twitter a couple days ago um, on Monday. So, yeah, that's this is interesting. Obviously, um, the head athletic trainer and um, the uh, director of athletic training as well were put on administrative leave. Uh, those were the two officials along with DJ Durkin because Rick Court, it says, got out of the way. Uh, I think DJ Durkin obviously can be... Um, is going to be put on is on this leave. What the question is: Can he can he be fired for cause? Um, that is kind of le- uh, leads up to be determined. Obviously, there is a quote from his con. There is a uh, excerpt from his contract. According to his contract, it says uh, cause should be defined as um, material misconduct, which was which is wrongful and moral, uh, meaning inconsistent with the professional standards of conduct of the intercollegiate head football coach. Or unlawful conduct, which adversely affects the coach's ability to meet the performance standards and performance commitments set in uh, sections one and three. Um, so yeah, th- I think that they're, that's going to be close. <laughs> You're going to be very close. Whether it's going to be wrongful material misconduct, uh, or it's going to be criminal, or, or some sort of um, unlawful conduct, where um, I don't know what the what the actual language of the law, letter of the law, is regarding um, the implication of Jordan McNair's death. And if anybody is going to be implemented implemented in that uh, matter, still remains to be seen. I think, um, but this is the uh, from Section Three. This is his t- duties as a head coach, conducting himself professionally and ethically with integrity and sportsmanship at all times, and invo- and avoiding inappropriate, profane, uh, discourteous, or insulting behavior towards student athletes or uh, other teams and coaches, spectators, and members of the media. Uh, yeah, so I think that you're kind of if the reports are true, obviously everything holds up. Um, then in the investigation, then you're going to have a cause, right? You're not going to have to do some buyout. Obviously, uh, the, the buyout, um, num- the number, if there was going to be a buyout has come around, has been reported around 6.5 million. But if that's the conducting yourself professionally and ethically with integrity and sportsmanship at all times, uh, inappropriate, profane, discourteous, or insulting behavior towards student athletes. Uh, I think that was exactly what they were pretty much, uh, Painting the picture for us when the ESPN came out with this report that that all happened: profane, profanity, discourteousness, uh, uh, insulting behavior, all that kind of stuff occurred according to this uh, report. And whether it was by T.J. Durkin himself or by Rick Court himself or both, uh, that the Rick Court, the fact that he resigned and just got right out of the way and didn't even, uh, you know, he came out with some sort of financial settlement. I don't know to get probably to make it easier for the university and get, to make get him move himself out of the way. Um, was the point for that. So I it just obviously remains to be seen what they're going to be doing with coach Durkin. And if he is going to be able to be bought, is going to have to be able to be bought out or if they could just fire him for cause, which I think that that spells out exactly what that is. If you're saying that the, the, the cause is anything that says this, uh, or you, you, him not standing up to the standards that were uh, uh, spelled out in that section three right there, then you could fire him for cause without a buy, without a buyout, without anything like that. Um, especially, I mean, I don't want to say, oh, pointing fingers. Oh, the kid died. Yeah, the kid died. That's that's another that's a whole another thing. I think it's that's separate. You can't really lump it all together. The number the kid died, and then the the Jordan McNair passed away, and then you also have reports from other students and previous coaches saying that the whole culture was corrupt and not corrupt, but toxic and gross and and using like I said, in, in, uh, der- degrading language, derogatory language. As I know, of course, oh, it's sport. No, this is there's a line. There is a line. It obviously was crossed. Um, there was a, there's a line when it comes to pushing pushing kids too. There's a line when it comes to exerting, making make sure that these kids exert enough physical uh, energy or whatever it is to uh, show the, to to make you happy. Basically, the coach to satisfy the coach running these 110 yard wind sprints in the swamp in the in the uh, in Maryland. Have you ever been to Maryland in uh, in the middle of in the middle of May, late May in Maryland? I don't think it's very. It isn't, it's, that's like the sweet spot. It's the end of spring, so there's still a lot of moisture in the air, and it's going to get hot, which means it's freaking humid. So the humidity. I don't know. I can't, I can't. I can look up the humidity stats of that day actually, if I really wanted to. Uh, but I probably was around seventy-five, eighty percent, and that's not help. That's not fun. 
to run 810 yard wind sprints, and you could very easily, like like happened in Jordan McNair, start getting dizzy, start getting lightheaded, pop a 106 fever. Oh, now he's having she's seizures. Okay, now let's call the EMTs. After he was forced to run, after seeing seeing him struggle, I mean, that's a culture where you have. Mo- this is a program that has m- tens of people. I mean, there's not I don't know about hundreds, but tens of people standing around the program at all times. Whether it's trainers, coaches, position coaches, graduate assistants, water boys, everything, and I'm sure a lot of them were on hand to watch this uh, conditioning um, happening, just to be on hand because that's your job. You're part of the program, and you see Jordan McNair struggling. And you don't, you can't say anything because you're there's a, a hush order or some sort of uh, a situation where a coach is the end all be all absolute power corrupts absolutely. What I say, there's a, a, a culture culture around there where nobody's going to stand up to the coach saying, "Hey, coach, he's done. Hey, coach, he's struggling. Hey, coach, I'm a medical professional. Let's stop." So obviously, yeah, you see, you see an athletic trainer and an athletic director, or I think the two athletic trainers were also, that's why they're put on uh, leave as, along with Coach Durkin, who, um, I mean, I don't know, we, we don't have, do we have reports out actually that he was the one specifically telling um, Jordan McNair to keep running? Was it record? Was it one of the athletic direct, athletic trainers to tell him to keep running? Because if they did, obviously, he's a college student. He's a, guy, a kid trying to make a football team. He's 19 years old. You can't, nothing rests on him. He did what he was supposed to do. He's an athlete. He keeps running. Um, but if you're a coach and you see somebody like that and you can't make a snap judgment, oh, yeah, he should stop. It's, it's freaking hot out here. It's humid. This is not healthy. 106 degree body temperature. That's like, you can, I'm surprised he didn't just die that day. It took him a week, two weeks to, to pass away. I mean, that's honestly a great fight by that kid because he was in bad shape. 106 degrees. Your normal body temperature is 97, 98 degrees. That's extremely high. It's an extremely high fever. A bad fever is 103. 102 is bad. 106. 106. Ugh. Just shake my head. All right. That'll do it for the show today, guys, as we'll come back on Wednesday and uh, k- keep talking about this uh, quarterback stuff. Maybe we'll have an annou- announcement by then uh, regarding the uh, any any of the ongoing investigations or any of the quarterback competitions, because we're just kind of waiting and seeing if we're, it's going to be week one for some of these teams to pick who their uh, starter is going to be, or we're going to have coaches come out uh, in the weeks previous to say, to put their um, hang their hat on a guy's name and say, he's my starter this season. All right. And guys, I'm back on Wednesday. Talk to you later. Oh, bye. You've been listening to the golden state media concepts, football podcast part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. From movies to music, from sports to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.